video on my orchid history. I have been asked by several of you, how long have I been growing orchids? What got me to growing orchids? And I did touch upon that briefly in my first ever video, the orchid tag that I did, but that was such a long time ago. And so many people have asked me that I figured I would make a separate video just on the history of how I got into orchids. And we're looking at my Angrecum sesquipedale, Variety Bossery during this video because she comes from where I come from, Africa. Now specifically, I come from Kenya, born and raised. And I always say I was born to be wild, but society won't let me. Huh. Speaking of how I got into orchids, I saw orchids before I even know they were orchids. So they've been part of my visual and in my periphery all my life since I can remember. And many of the gardens in Mombasa in Kenya where I live had orchids in their trees, dotted around their garden, in containers, just growing there as epiphytes do. But at the age of 12, I was absolutely intrigued and fascinated by one big, floofy, nicely smelling bloom. And when the lady saw me smelling this beautiful bloom, she asked me if I wanted some of it. And I was like, yes. And she told me that my gardener would be able to help me put it in a tree and just let it grow. So she gave me a piece of it, which I found horrific, the way it was just cut off at the base, and I could carry home this plant, and then my gardener stuck it up in a tree. Turns out that was a cattleya. I don't know the name of it, but that was my first orchid, even though I didn't have to buy it. <laughs> it was my first orchid. So I had this stick kind of structure plant thing in my tree that I was super, super proud of, but it wouldn't bloom for me. What I wasn't told at the time was that it takes a long time for another growth to grow that then has to bloom out. So every time I went back to this lady's house and other friends' houses, I checked their garden for these orchids. And bit by bit, word of mouth spread that I was putting orchids into my trees as well. Now, mind you, I was just 12 years old and I had absolutely no understanding about the growth habit of these orchids. So I was a little bit frustrated when I wasn't always coming home with a piece of an orchid until it was explained to me that they take a long time to grow and bloom, especially by the lady that gave me that first cut. But as the years went by, obviously, I got more and more pieces that I just put up into trees. I never got myself an Angracum though, because they were stuck in the ground around the gardens that were full of limestone and sandy rock. So I only ever saw these beautiful Angracum in other people's homes. And of course, now I understand why I never got a piece of an Angracum, which was very frustrating for me at the time, because, you know, kids will be kids. And once you give them one thing and they like it, they want more. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Anyway, I still had the pleasure of seeing Angracums and other gardens when they bloomed. And because of the word of mouth, I was actually always invited into these private homes to come and check out orchids that were in bloom. Eventually, my collection grew over the six years that I was able to just collect pieces of orchids and stick them up into trees. And I cannot tell you how easy it was to take care of them because I didn't. <laughs> Nature did everything for me. Super high humidity, Epiphytes grew the way epiphytes were supposed to grow. It was never cold. I never had any temperature issues. It was never too dry. The pouring rain would take care of them when they did. Some of the monkeys would come and destroy some pseudobulbs and chew on them, but it never freaked me out. I never had freak out moments with my orchids in the first six years that I grew them. Anyway, at 18, I graduated from high school. I went to Germany and did my studies and then orchids were passé. There was a thing of the past until I came to Spain. And then I started to see these structures that rang a bell in the garden centers. Of course, mainly Phalaenopsis, but you know, the blooms, it's an orchid, bring it home. So the first ever Phalaenopsis I bought was a pink one. No surprises there then. And no, I don't have her anymore. But bit by bit, eventually a cattleya would join in and suddenly I had a balcony filled with orchids again, which was wonderful. I grew them in clay pots with the bark media that I could find here, which was terrible quality. So I used to strain out all the dust and I would be left with some bark chunks. Now, being epiphytes, knowing how they were doing in my trees, I never bothered to replace bark or change out the pot or up pot, repot. My orchids grew very, very unruly and unkempt, but they grew to a certain degree until I realized I should be fertilizing them because, you know, back in Kenya, 
I did none of that. And then I thought, okay, I have to fertilize them. And that is when my problem started. Fertilize too high, burn the roots, etc. So I learned a lot back in the day, growing in bark and with my clay pots and about watering water quality and fertilizer. But it was more like a dig in the dark kind of learning curve. It wasn't internet based. It was like the last time I did this, that went wrong. The next time I did this, that worked better. I just kept tapping into the memory bank of why was it so easy in Kenya and why is it so difficult here? One of the biggest challenges was, and it was a big light bulb moment in my head, is that it gets cold here. <laughs> oh, the learning curve back in those days. That was my second collection. That was in the 90s. And then a relationship started and that relationship was basically it's the orchids or it's me. And then I thought, well, don't be like that and uh, follow your heart and go with a relationship. So I gave up that collection. That was my second one. And the ones that I'm documenting now on my channel is my third collection. Now, back in the 80s in Germany, I used to grow a lot of houseplants. I was not necessarily a plant lady, as was part of a question in one of the comments, but I wanted palm trees around me, something that reminded me of where I came from in Africa. You would get these house plants that look like palm trees. And back in the 80s, the whole thing of Lekka and self-watering became a thing. I used to hate having to have my plants in the house with soil. It would splash, it would, oh, I don't know. We had carpets everywhere, so when self-watering and Lekka came into being, all my house plants went straight into that system and I loved it. Fast forward again to this collection. When this collection started arriving in my home in 2018, I knew I could source Lekka locally. And because after all these years, knowing that the bark quality here is so rubbish, I was thrilled to bits that now, with the internet at my fingertips, I could get the orchids that I want and that remind me of home, and I could grow them the way I did in Germany in Lecker and self-watering. I didn't think twice about plonking any of my orchids into Lecker and self-watering. I didn't think about new root growth. I didn't think about temperature, evaporative cooling, none of that. I saw a plant, I've got Lecker, I've got self-watering. That plant is going into this setup. Some did very well for me and uh, some were set back, but they didn't die. So that was a good thing. But when I realized that some weren't thriving the way others were, that's when I went onto the clackety clack, the Google. And that's when I found Ray Barcolo. And the rest literally is history because I immersed myself as if I was doing my graduate university doctor paper. <laughs> and I absorbed everything that I could absorb when it came to growing orchids in Lekka and self-watering. So literally the first two years of getting my collection and putting it in this setup were again trial and error and readjusting the muscle memory in my brain based on what I used to do in the past. And despite having some failures along the way with the system and learning how to tweak it, because that was another learning curve, is that it's not just get the bag of Lekka and throw it in the pot with the orchid. Suddenly we had salt buildup because the Lekka was dirty. And all these little factors have brought me to this day where I get angry at myself that I think it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna get this orchid anyway. And if it didn't work the first time, I will tweak it the second time. If it doesn't work the second time, I will tweak it a third time and then I'm out. And I get angry at myself because I overestimated my competence and killed an orchid. Orchids are precious to me. They keep me grounded. They remind me of home. I feel as though in my heart I have been growing orchids for all my life, even if I wasn't actually actively involved in a collection. But I can tell you the frustration of my second collection in the pots, not understanding why they weren't doing well for me in southern Spain and I used to grow them so well in Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> when I literally did nothing in Kenya but slap them into a tree and pick up a pseudobulb chewed up by a monkey. That is when I learned the most. It was easier for this third collection once I was seeing certain things happening to just go onto the internet and check things out and get some other ideas, some other feedback and then try to correlate that with my environment and my climate. 
I used to grow on heat mats the first two years and I still lost orchids because of the cooler temperatures in the winter. So I have stopped using heat mats. Pretty much what is going on now is me learning if the orchids that I have can hold on and make it throughout my winter months. And those that do and that can, they stay. And those that can't, I'm not buying them again because it is such a shame to be the cause of the demise of these beautiful, beautiful creatures, as I like to call them. I don't call them kiddos for nothing because they each have their own personality and their personality changes from year to year depending on what kind of influences they have to deal with. The bugs, the pests, too hot, too cold. And this is what surprised me this year about my Angregum here. That bloom that you see yellowing there, even though it looks pretty, that's only 10 days old. I should be getting at least three weeks out of it before it changes that color. So again, I've learned something new. This February, it was far too cold with the added humidity for this orchid to be able to hold on to her blooms for the length of time she should be holding on to her blooms. So there you have it in a nutshell. My history from growing in trees all the way to clay and bark and then getting to know the temperature differences, understanding why orchids do what they do, putting them into LECA and self-watering because it's a plant. I used to grow house plants in LECA and self-watering and then going on the clackety-clack Google and starting to become a little bit more enlightened as to why I was getting this salt buildup and what it all meant. Yeah, and here we are. I want to say thank you for your questions and for expressing interest in my orchid history. Now I have a video if anybody else were to ask in the future that I can link. <laughs> thank you so very, very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. From an overcast Spanish February day and a rather chilly day as is clearly expressed in my bossery here and myself. You have yourself a beautiful day on one condition though that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.